These secondary ribs have been put in with silicon bronze nails and spacers, probably so that water can flow underneath them. I don't see that they do much to strengthen the boat, so I'm taking them out, removing the spacer blocks and reinstalling them uh, and uh, roving and riveting uh, on, on uh, each one. So I'm, I think I'm putting nine back in, in between the floors that I've put on the boat. You know, we rarely use twist drills. Oh, yeah. In the old days, umbrellas used to have uh, spring steel in the spokes. And if you could get an old umbrella, it was uh, about 1.6 to 2.5 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter spring steel. Okay. And you would just cut off the ends of it. Yep. Hammer it flat, put a sharp edge on the front, and it disappears. <laughs> Yeah. And the smaller ones are the smaller ones. And, yeah. and most most of the nail drilling is done with a pierce. Yeah, okay. I think I've still got some in my box. Yeah. You know where I I kept uh, I kept some old umbrella spokes. <laughs> so I'll show you. Good. They're great for putting ribs in if you if you uh, were finding that the ribs were splitting and sometimes spot gum used to split a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you'd run a pierce through before you handed the nail through the rim. So. first Well those uh, secondary ribs are all installed now, eight in total, and they're spaced out along the boat in between the uh, main floors. Well that just about finishes the hull fastenings, except for the two short stringers that have to go in up forward.
My next step, I think, is to have a look at the propeller shaft. It's a uh, stuffing box has been put into a, uh, a really weird position there. I don't know if there's a stern tube connecting the stuffing box with the rear bearing, but that's my next approach to find it out. I might take the uh, the rear bearing off and just see what's there. As far as I can see, the the shaft hole is full of grease, so that doesn't uh, make me think that there is a a stern tube, because you wouldn't need that much grease, I don't think. And I don't. I'll have to use the stern tube because otherwise, uh, it's uh, going to leak water into the boat all over the place. I've got to rely on. Uh, and no water getting past that uh, barrier of epoxy and glass on the outside. So, and that's a weak point. Now I had to leave a, uh, a string line through this to get the line of the shaft to accurately put the engine beds in the boat. And I didn't want to take this off. I, I really want to find out if there's a stern tube in here. I'm hoping that there is, so I'm going to take this uh, stern, stern gland off, stern bearing or whatever you call it, off, and see what we've got inside, because I want to end up with a stern tube so that uh, the only face I have to seal is this one. steel. Well, hopefully it's not stainless, it's model. I'll have to get a half nut. I'll lock these together. Yes, that's moving. Thank goodness for that. tap it. Oh. If it's a stern tube, this should unscrew it. As I suspected, I don't think this is a stern tube. Oh. oh. Unless there has been. Ah. 
sounds like a stand tube. Just not connected. Well, what do you make of that? Time to ask Mr. Porter, I think. Well, I'll have to take the, oh dear, I'll have to take the, the uh, internal floor out. Well, that's really good news. That's a stand tube. Full of grease. To get the stand tube and the stuffing box out, I'll have to remove this floor, which has been sort of built around the stuffing box and the end of the block holding it. So these uh, look like stainless steel nuts. They've had little bits of flat bar welded on them so that they can sit in there. So these two bolts will go into here and hold the main, the, the rear bearing on and screw into those nuts. Then the nut on the outside can be tightened up. I guess this all needs to be changed for silicon bronze, bronze to stop that electrolysis. Now, I've taken the stern shear out. The stuffing box screws onto the front of this stern tube, which is a bronze fitting. It's been brazed onto a piece of stainless steel inch and a half tube. A two inch tube, a little bit, two inch tube. And then at the other end, at the other end, there's a fitting screwed into the stern gland. And then that just pushes in a taper fit into that stern tube. Not a very good system because I imagine that that would leak water in. So I'm going to change this stern tube for a silicon bronze tube with threaded ends and that way I'll be able to seal up the boat. As you can see, this block which holds the end of the shaft in the stuffing box is a mess. So I've had to replace it. To reproduce that shaft line, I turned up this piece of Oregon which slides neatly into there and I drilled a hole up the middle of it. This circular piece was turned on the lathe and a centre hole was drilled, it's about three quarters of an inch or so. Then 
that uh, circular piece of timber was inserted into the shaft hole and then cut off so that it's a tapered fit on the bottom of this block. I, uh, I then glued the block down to that while it was sitting in the tube. So now I've got a hole that's pretty well centered on where the um, shaft hole needs to be. So now I'm drilling it through using that hole in the circuit block as a pilot hole. So I'll drill a hole right through and out the right hand end of the block as we see it here now. So that will give me a starting hole that I'll be able to use on to all the way to uh, cut the control hole. It's about three millimeters out, so it'll be one and a half millimeters off center. That's not too bad. I made up a boring bar, the correct diameter, uh, to cut a hole the correct diameter, and I used a, uh, a small lead out of the front, a couple of maybe 50 millimeters of lead, same size bar as a uh, hole through the block. And I set up the block under the pedestal drill using a, a longer piece of bar to make sure that the pilot hole was precisely vertical under the drill. Then I clamped the block in place and cut the hole from the face that would go inside the boat back towards the rear end. This worked out pretty well. Um, as you can see, it takes a while to it takes a while to get a boring bar like this to go through in main timber, so it needed to be cleared out quite often, um, and it would cut down maybe 10 or 15 millimeters at a time and then clear the whole thing. So, um, it worked out.
Once the pedestal drill had drilled to the full depth that it could, the block then had to be moved upwards uh, so that a second bite could be taken. So uh, I did this in two runs. Once I drilled down as far as the boring bar would allow me, I then turned the block upside down and tried to drill it from the outside, which was ta taking off most of the uh, cylinder of the block that I've made. You can see at the bottom half here how far the hole's been cut through. So I've only got about maybe 150 millimeters, if that, to cut down. To, uh, to get the holes to join up. As when I'd been uh, drilling from the other end, I had to uh, move the block up to take a second bite on this one after I'd gone the full depth that the drill would go. This looked like it was going to work out okay and I was going to get the whole hole through, but uh, things didn't quite go as planned because the glue joint um, between the round block and the main block wasn't done under pressure. It was just the block was just sat on top of it and, and glued on with a bit of glue. So pretty soon after I started drilling, you can see that it just smashed the block off. So luckily I 
only had about maybe 75, 80 millimeters between the upper hole and the lower hole. So I was able to just cut that out with a gouge chisel and uh, complete the hole. So it all worked out well in the end. Well, I've successfully bored a hole through here. And now I need to face the top of the block and the front of the block. So I'll get an angle on the front first. I'm putting a square down the center of the hole. the height that I want. Make sure that's parallel to the bottom. Thank <laughs> you. 